What if I told you that the way we handle saturation in photography and videography is entirely wrong? I kid you not. Have a look at these clips. The only difference is the method of saturation being used. I think the difference is clear. The standard approach to saturation just looks unnatural in comparison. And once you see it, you really can't unsee it. So in this video, I will show you exactly what's going on and how you can achieve this natural looking and filmic saturation quickly and easily in your color grades in Final Cut Pro. To really understand what's going on, we need to talk about what makes a red apple a red apple. Well, this is a close up of this apple's surface. And in the real world, it gets hit by different light rays. Some light rays are red, some light rays are green, some are blue. And of course, there are many more different wavelengths of light. But just for the sake of simplicity, let's stick with red, green and blue for this example. In order for the apple to appear red to the observer, there's only two things that need to happen. For one, all of the green light and all of the blue light needs to be absorbed and only the red light needs to be reflected. And the reflection of only the red light from the apple's surface is what makes the apple appear red. Okay, this means in the real world, if the apple is red, this just means the absence of all of the other light that is not red. So what makes this apple red is that the light absorbs all of the wavelengths of light that are not red. And only the red light rays are getting reflected. Let's break this down a bit more. Okay, as we just discussed, for the apple to appear red, we need the red light to be reflected, the green light to be absorbed, and the blue light to be absorbed. But let's not be so extreme for now. I'll move this to the side just a bit so we can see what's going on. Let's just say the green light is being absorbed just a bit and the blue light is being absorbed just a bit. This means the resulting hue of the apple is still red, but it's only somewhat bright and only somewhat saturated. Now, if the green and the blue light is absorbed a bit more, like this, the hue still stays the same, but the saturation increases and the brightness decreases. Because this is the most important thing to understand. If saturation increases, there is more light being absorbed. And more light being absorbed means there is less light to see. This means the resulting brightness of an object needs to decrease in order to look natural. Because this is the way it works in the real world. Let's break this down one last step further. We just noticed that the hue of the color doesn't change. We are only concerned about brightness and saturation for now. Okay, let's evaluate these two things. There is brightness and saturation. And as we just discussed, in the real world, when saturation increases, the brightness needs to decrease. Because remember, a more saturated color means that more light is being absorbed. And that means there is less light to see. This is why the brightness needs to decrease. And by the way, when I talk about the real world, we need to talk about one other thing, which is visual cognition. You know, being able to see things is not really about an objective reality that we just see because we are not a camera, we are human beings. The way we see the world is a combination of our eyes and our brains, meaning we are dealing with visual cognition. And this is exactly the key point, visual cognition. Because let's move this to the side and now let's have a look at photo and video. And we will keep visual cognition in mind because we are trained to see saturation increase with the brightness decrease. This is the way we see the world. This is the way how everything works in the real world. Now, what happens in photography and videography? Because our works are being displayed on screen, screens do emit light. And the way standard saturation is calculated is that once the saturation increases, the brightness also increases because we add color to the image. And this is a big no-no because this breaks visual cognition and it just looks unnatural. This is why the examples in the beginning using subtractive saturation or density looked so much more natural because in the real world, when saturation increases, there is less light to see. That means by the very definition, this method of increasing the saturation of a color in the real world is subtractive. Unfortunately, Final Cut Pro does not offer a tool for subtractive saturation. So this is why I had to build my own. Let's have a look. Let's use this clip of me holding a color chart. I had a new instance of color wheels and drag this before the LUT. 
Because remember, in Final Cut Pro, the signal flows from top to bottom with the input at the top and the output at the bottom. This means our corrections here are being performed before the LUT. And this LUT turns our SLOG3 scammer3.cine footage to Rec709. And to take advantage of the larger color space of our camera, we want to work before the LUT. Okay, with that out of the way, I will just call this saturation and I go into my color wheels and increase the overall saturation. Let's say we want to achieve a saturation level of something like... something like that. Okay, let's compare this to my density plugin. I go to Clip, Audition and select Duplicate as Audition so we can have a new version of this clip. Then I will delete this saturation adjustment, go into my effects and take the density plugin and apply it to my clip. Now I will drag it before the LUT because remember we want to work in the larger color space. And now I increase the global density to a similar level and I think something like that, something like 80, 85-ish, let's go with 83. I think that is a similar level of saturation. By pressing Y on my keyboard, I can toggle between the different versions. So this is density and this is saturation. Have a look at how much the color checker shifts. So this is saturation and this is density. Maybe I can zoom in a bit. So again, this is density and this is saturation. As you can see, using the standard method of saturation, it almost appears as if the color checker starts to glow. And this is exactly what breaks visual cognition. Because by the very nature of additive saturation, we add more color to make the image more colorful. But it doesn't work that way in the real world. So let's compare to density one last time. So this is density and this is much closer to the real world. Let's have a look at my skin tones because this should be a big difference as well. So I go in a little bit further still and I go to my face and we want to have a look at the dark side of my face. So let's pay attention to that. Here is density and here is saturation. Again, this is density and this is saturation. You can see that the default method of saturation makes the dark half of my face a bit brighter. Again, this is saturation, this is density. This is saturation and this is density. Okay, let's zoom back out and have a look at some other examples. The next clip is a shot that is also mostly ungraded. I only have an exposure and balance adjustment here just to get us in the right direction. And this clip was being shot using a Blackmagic camera. So we're going from Blackmagic Film Generation 5 to Rec. 709. Again, I'll add another instance of color wheels, drag this before my LUT and call this saturation. Then I go in here and increase the saturation to somewhere, I think, somewhere like this looks the most natural to me. Okay, now let's save this version of this clip. So I make sure my clip is selected, then I go to Clip, Audition and Duplicate as Audition. Now I can delete this saturation adjustment and go to my Effects and add the Density plugin. Now again, I will drag this before the LUT and I will just increase the global density to a similar level of saturation. And I think again, somewhere around 80-ish, 85-ish seems to look right. Now let's compare both versions again. So this is density and this is saturation. Again, density and saturation. Look how much more natural density looks. Granted, the difference in this image is not as stark. So let's take this moment to have a look at the density plugin. You can see at the bottom here, there is a global slider. And maybe I show you this on this shot of me with the color checker. So I will zoom into the color checker so you can see what's going on. Here we go. Well, at the very bottom of the density plugin, we have a global density slider. This just increases or decreases density globally. Let's park it at around 80, which was the value we had it at before. Then you can also see we have different sliders for the individual colors. So you can make red more dense or less dense. Let's reset this. You can adjust the skin tones individually, more or less density. You can also adjust yellow individually, you can also adjust green individually, and you can also adjust cyan, blue, and magenta individually. This should help you to achieve the exact look you're going for. Let's zoom out again and move on to the last example here. This image was shot using an ARRI camera, so we're going from ARRI Log C4 ARRI White Gamut to Rec. 709. Again, I'll add an instance of color wheels, drag this before the LUT, and increase the saturation to my liking, I think something like this, and see how the red hair starts to glow here. I mean, this is just entirely unnatural. 
So I think, in general, look how everything gets so much brighter if I jack the saturation up. Of course, you wouldn't increase saturation all the way like this. But I think, again, this demonstrates the additive nature of saturation very beautifully. So let's dial in an amount of saturation that I can live with creatively. I think something like this works out. Again, I'll make sure that my clip is selected. Go to Clip, Audition, and select Duplicate as Audition. Now I get rid of my saturation adjustment and I will apply density for one last time. Then I drag the density plugin before the LUT and we just increase the global slider something like this. And I think we can go even further. Let's see if we can push the reds just a bit more. Okay, I think we're starting to break the image here. If I pay attention to this area here, it starts to crush it just a bit. So I back that off. And maybe I also reduce the density in the skin tones just a tad. Something like this. So this before, this is after, and now let's compare these two versions. So I press Y on my keyboard. This is the version using density, and this is the version using saturation. And I think this clip really illustrates the difference. Let's have a look at it in full screen. This is saturation, and this is density. We achieve the same level of saturation, but one looks entirely different than the other. So again, this is saturation, and this is density. If you're ready to take your color grades to the next level, the link to my plugin is in the video description. And if you're interested in more plugins for Final Cut Pro that make the impossible possible, then you should watch this video next.